The next topic is the scientific notation and significant figures. The scientific notation is a way to write whole numbers and decimal numbers in this way. Big A times 10 raised to the power of little a, where big A is a decimal number with one non-zero digit in front of the decimal point, and little a is a whole number. Let me give you two examples, one of a whole number and one of a decimal number. In the first case, try to get a number between 1 and 10 by putting a dot at the very end and going to the left 1 and 2 times, and this is equal to 3.33 times 10 and raised to the power of times that you move to the left 2. This can also be rewritten as 3.33 times 100, which should give you back your original number. For the second case, start from the dot that is already there and move two times, one and two, in order to get a number that is between one and 10. This should give you 3.33 times 10 and raised to a negative power of the times that you move to the right, two. Notice that this can also be rewritten as 3.33 divided by 100, which should give you back your original number. Let's check the scientific notation of these answers. So the form of the scientific notation is here where big A is a decimal number with one non-zero digit in front of the decimal point. That non-zero digit in front of the decimal point is 3, and the decimal number is 3.33, which is fine. And little a is a whole number, which in one case is negative 2, and the other case is 2. Let's move on to significant figures. Significant figures are the digits in a reported measurement. So only numbers with units or numbers that have been measured are the ones that are relevant in the calculation of significant units. Numbers such as factors, whole numbers, divisors, and bases of logarithms are not significant because they don't come from a measurement. Having that in mind, there are three rules of significant figures that we should keep in mind. The first one is that all non-zeros are significant. As an example, we have 568 meters. Notice that there is a unit because this one is coming from a measurement. 5, 6, and 8 are non-zeros, so this number has three significant figures. The second rule is that zeros between non-zeros are significant. Between non-zeros are significant. As an example, we have 309 meters. So the 3 and 9 are relevant by rule 1. And the 0 is relevant by rule 2 because it's in between two non-zero numbers. So there is three significant figures. The third rule is that trailing zeros are only significant if they come from a measurement. And let me explain what a trailing zero is. Trailing zeros are basically zeros that come after a decimal point or zeros to the right of a decimal point. So these zeros are significant when they come from measurement. A measurement. As an example, let's look at the first number, 0 0.0034500. The first zero is not significant because it's to the left of a decimal point in a decimal number. The next two zeros are also not significant 
because they don't come from a measurement. 3, 4, and 5 are significant because they are non-zero. The last zeros are significant because they come from a measurement. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. So we have five numbers that are significant. So we have five significant figures for this case. Just to keep in mind the scientific notation, we can write this as 3.4500 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3. And notice that this also keeps the five significant figures. The next example, we have 2.0040 for zero meters. So the first number is significant because it's from a measurement and is non-zero. The next two zeros are significant because they are in between two non-zeros. The fourth one is significant by rule one, it's non-zero, and the last one is from a measurement, so it's also relevant. So we have five significant figures. The next two numbers are 42,000 meters. The first one is has two significant figures. And the last one has five significant figures. What is the difference between these two? The difference is that the last one has a dot at the end. If we get very technical, which some books don't, the zeros in the whole number that don't are not in between non-zeros are relevant if there is a dot at the very end, like in this case. But if there is no dot at the end, then they become irrelevant. And there is only two significant figures. And this is only for whole numbers. Now, if your textbook specifically says that they will ignore the dots at the end of their numbers, and that whole numbers should be relevant regardless, or rather the zeros in whole numbers should be relevant regardless, then this number should have five sig figs. Let's talk about significant figures in basic operations. I will cover each one of these operations and do examples accordingly so that things are more clear. The first one is rounding off. You round decimal numbers up if the last digit is above or equal to 5, and down if it is below 5. Let's say in the example here, I want the final answer to have two significant figures. The first number is 2.35 grams. Notice also that I have units in each one of the numbers in these examples, because it only makes sense to analyze significant figures in numbers that have been measured, so they have to have units. Having said that, this number has three significant figures. So to make it have two, I look at the last number, five, and this one would round up the number three to 2.4 grams. Next, we have 2.32 grams. I look at the last number, and this is less than five, so this would round down the three to 2.3 grams. Lastly, we have 2.36 grams, and the last number is 6. This is greater than 5, so this number would be rounded up to 2.4 grams. All of these numbers have two significant figures as desired. The next operation is addition and subtraction. In this case, the number of decimal places in the result is the same as the smallest number of decimal places in the data. In this case, we look at the number of decimal places in each one of the numbers in the data, rather than looking at the significant figures. So for 0 0.10 grams, we have two decimal places, and for 0 0.024 grams, we have three decimal places. The answer has to have the smallest number of the two. In this case, it's two decimal places. Now, adding up these two numbers without rounding gives us 0.124 grams. So this has three decimal places. So to make it have two, we have to round this. So the last number is four, which make it round down. 
So this gives us 0.12 grams and this has two decimal places as desired. The next operation is multiplication and division. In this case, the number of significant figures is the same as the smallest number of significant figures in the data. So here, in this division, we have to look at the significant figures of the numerator, which is three significant figures, and the denominator, which has two significant figures. The smallest number gives the significant figures in the final answer. In this case, it's two. So dividing these two without rounding gives us 4.31 gram per centimeter cube. So this has three significant figures, so we have to round this. The last number has uh, is one, so it's less than five, which makes this number round down to 4.3 gram per centimeter cube. And this number has two significant figures as desired. The next operation is integers and exact numbers. In multiplying or dividing by a whole number, the uncertainty of the result is determined by the measured value. Looking at the first example, we see that 56.7 grams, which is a measured value, is divided by 4, a whole number. So 4 is irrelevant, and 56.7 has three significant figures. So the final answer must have that number of significant figures. Dividing these two numbers, we get without rounding 14.175 grams. Now, to have three significant figures, we look at the fourth number, and this is greater than five, so the one is rounded up to 14.2 grams. And this number has three significant figures as desired. The next example is convert 100.000 degrees Celsius to degrees Kelvin. Notice that this number is a measured number that has six significant figures. The formula to convert Celsius to Kelvin is degrees Kelvin equals the number of degrees Celsius plus 273.15 degrees Celsius. This number here is a constant, so it's not taken into account in the determination of significant figures. So to get the final answer, we add this plus 273.15 degrees Celsius. And we end up getting 373.15 0 degrees Celsius. And we added the zero at the end because we must have six significant figures as desired. The next operation is logarithms. Here, the mantissa of a common logarithm has the same number of significant figures as the original number. Let's break this down. Let's first define what is mantissa. Mantissa is the number of decimal places in the result after an operation of a logarithm. So the decimal places of the result of a log or natural log operation. Okay, so in the first example, it asks to do the log of 24.3. This can be rewritten in scientific notation as this, 2.43 times 10. Then we take the log of this and we obtain without rounding 1.386 and we see that the mantissa is here 3 because that's the number of signif of decimal places and this has to match the number of significant figures 
given here. So three significant figures, which is perfect. The next example is the log of 0 0.068. This can be rewritten as 6.8 times 10 to the negative 2. So then we take the log of this number. We notice that this has two significant figures. So the final answer has to have two decimals. So using the calculator, we get negative 1.17. And this has two decimal places. Lastly, we have the anti-log of 23.32. To find the anti-log, that means that the log of some number is 23.32. This is base 10. And the mantissa here is two decimal places. Right? Because it's the result, the, the decimal places in the result of a log operation. Okay, so the number of significant figures of this antilog has to be 2. Then, if we perform the antilog, that's 10 to the power of 23.32. Using our calculator, we get 2.1 times 10 to the 23rd. And this has 2 significant figures as desired. Finally, let's do an example problem to apply some of the things learned in this lecture. The problem says, express the answer to the following calculation to the correct number of significant figures. On the top, we have a multiplication. On the bottom, we have an addition. I would start with the addition, and remember that in addition, we see the number of decimal places rather than significant figures. The first number has one decimal place and the second number also has one decimal place. When adding these two numbers, we get 257.6, which also has one decimal place, as desired. Then we write the other numbers, and in this case, we have a multiplication on the top and then a division at the bottom. So the same rule can be applied to all three numbers. In this case, we look at the number of significant figures for each of the numbers. This one, 51.875, has five significant figures. 1.700 has four significant figures. And 257.6 has four significant figures. Now we look at the least number of significant figures, which is 4. That's the number of sig figs for the result. So multiplying and dividing all three numbers, then we get 0 0.3423, which has 4 significant figures, as desired.